Now this is definitely something if you are a reseller or you see this item in out and about, these raised items that lift something off the ground, which maybe they were plant stands. And we actually recently found some at a local auction. They said that they were storage displays. So we actually ran across three of these. And I have to tell you, as soon as we put these in the booth from the auction hall and we spray painted them black, they were a quick sell because people like to put their extra pillows and their blankets and some decor in them, though I think they might have been, these may have been plant stands, but I usually do love that chippy, rusty look, but I am gearing these more towards a inside if you wanna put your blankets in them. So, and since they're not crisp bright and they're more of a cream, I'm gonna go ahead and get them sprayed up. So to spray them off, I'm just using the Rust-Oleum's enamel paint in the black matte finish. welcome to the channel it is Yvonne from ginger chick rehab thank you for hopping on and checking out what I am up to so today's video yes I want to share with you a couple items that if I see them when I am secondhand shopping via thrift stores auctions estate sales garage sales I do not let them pass up for as a reseller they are items that are usually a quick sell so you know there wasn't really anything to those you just spray clean them spray paint them up but if you're not lucky enough to run across one that's already put together you can create your own so we've got a plant stand we have a basket with a liner whether you keep the liner or not it's personal choice but we can raise this up we can make this into a decor piece that somebody wants also so first off first i'm going to go ahead and remove this burlap insert whether I use it again, I'm not sure, but for right now, we're gonna get these two sprayed up in that same enamel wear paint. The nice thing about it is you don't have to use a top coat on this enamel wear paint. And it's nice to make, when you paint them, you can make the two pieces match. <laughs> Now that I painted them all up, they are dry. The enamel wear paint dries in like 15 minutes, but since I'm putting metal on metal and I don't want it to scratch off, I'm gonna wait a day before attaching the two together so that way I make sure that the paint is cured. Now I'm just taking some black wire. Yep, just some simple black wire. I'm gonna cut a little piece off and where the four legs are, that's how I'm going to attach the two pieces together. So I'm just gonna take that wire where that leg part is, weed it through so I'm grabbing both the top and the bottom and then just take some needle nose pliers and twist it until it's nice and tight that's why you want to make sure your paint is cured and then clip off the excess and then when it comes to the excess I want to make sure that I twist that sharp edge going up and in and making sure that there's no way that somebody can cut themselves on it or it can grab your blankets.
and I know y'all would not have passed these up either. Look at these beauties. Oh my gosh, the tacks, the fabric is wonderful. Oh uh, well, the bottoms not so much, but it seems like they just have a screw loose, especially for the 1029 price a piece. These are beautiful. So Chris is going to go ahead and get that top removed. I'm working on another project. We're always constantly working on multiples when we're in the shop. So he is always happy to help. This is a team effort. So, and yes, right off the bat, he can tell some of the screws. This is kind of probably like an Ikea type of piece where you had to put it together. There's those little leftover residue of a tags where they say ABC. You put this part and that part together. So you know that some of the screws actually probably were never put in tight enough and then they came loose. Then on the bottom of the piece, they have screw in slides <laughs> and none of them were even. I don't, I'm not sure why, <laughs> if they were just fun to play with or somebody's floor was really that uneven. So we're going to remove those as to not paint those when we paint the bottom of this piece. And I did assess these in the thrift store and noticed that, yes, the rungs were loose. Some of the screws were missing. They weren't attached. But, and then some of them just plain and simply weren't tight. So I'm like, I think that this is an easy fix. And a lot of these put together pieces, I think too, also, even if you don't get that screw in tight enough, since there's not any wood glue, they don't ever recommend you using wood glue to keep the pieces and parts together. They also, the screws just over sitting and moving around, they just come loose on their own. So one of the things he's going to do is he's actually going to take it all apart and actually glue in all those pieces that need a little bit of glue to make a little bit extra tight bond in the joint areas so that this stays together. Now that he has everything tightened back up, I'm going to go ahead and give it a good cleaning. Actually, you guys, this is not real wood. This is probably a resin. It is kind of got a plastic feel to it. Um, see what I mean? There's a lot of those little tags that told you how to put it together. But yes, I'm going to go ahead and give this a good cleaning. Now to paint this up, I'm going to use that same Rust-Oleum enamel paint. This should be perfect for this resin type of wood, <laughs> resin type of, yeah. Um, but like the hard part of this was, you know, it's easier to spray all these spindles and all these angles that you have to get to. Actually getting into all the fake greening that they made on this piece was actually the hardest. So I actually had to not only spray it from the upside and then turn it right side up. I actually had to spray it from the side to side to actually fill in all those little fakey grain places. And now that my paint is dry, I'm going to go ahead and reattach it to the cushion. The cushion is gorgeous. The material's in great shape. I did have to find a couple extra screws that we had in our um, stash of supplies. So yes, even some of the screws that held the cushion in were also missing. Now I really thought I was going to be done and then as I'm staging them I'm like that one kind of looks like it might have a hue of staining and then it's just so much white now but We've got them good and secure. They're good and tight. I'm going to go ahead and give the fabric a good cleaning. Let that fabric dry. And then, yeah, y'all, I'm going to add a little bit of detail to the top of these. They just, after painting that black on the bottom, I just, I just felt it that it needed something. So grain sack striping it is. So I'm finding which direction the fabric goes to follow the direction with my grain sack stripe. 
Now I'm going to be, do a big chunky stripe in the middle. So I have two inch masking tape. I ordered it off of Amazon. I like this because it doesn't leave any sticker residue. The first and main concern is to try to make my first placing on my tape even on both sides and stay it straightened with what the cushion is. And so now I'm going to take another piece of that masking tape and I'm going to lay it on both sides, making sure that I stay nice and straight. And then now I'm going to remove that center stripe because that is where my paint is going to go. But I want a little bit more added paint. I don't want to cover up and try to get in between those tacks by any means. So I'm just going to take a little piece of tape and just tape off that seam area. Now, I don't know about you all, but I get a little bit nervous because I'm going to be using black paint and I don't want to get it on the fabric that I don't want to paint. So I'm just using some towels. So just in case I do any drippage, oh, just to, it's better to be cautionary than try to have to clean paint off. And yeah, that doesn't work so much. So I'm just taking a stencil brush and trying to have just a little bit of paint on and just gingerly work it into this fabric. Unlike the drop cloth fabric that I usually use, this fabric is much thicker. Now you'll see my first coat did not cover, but it's best not to try to oversaturate and have it bleed underneath the tape. That's why the tape's there to protect it and make a crisp line. So I used the heat of the blow dryer. I helped it dry anything that was left. And now I'm going to go in with a second coat and find those areas that need a little bit more paint. And I'm actually using the Apple Barrel Multi-Use Paint. This has always been my go-to for painting fabric. Now that I have my black stripe covered, I'm going to go ahead and use the blow dryer, making sure that that paint is dry, and then remove my towels, and then very gingerly remove, I think all my paint is dry, but I want to go nice and slow, just in case. The nice thing about using a matte paint is you know that it's dry because it's not shiny anymore. And now that I have my nice bold center line, I'm going to add two smaller stripes on the side. So I'm using that same two inch masking tape. I'm just going to slightly off center it. Probably I would say, ooh, I don't know, just like a quarter of an inch out. <laughs> Not quite a half, but the nice thing about the masking tape is you can see all the way through it. And it's really easy with this fabric because the fabric threads are nice and bold to be able to follow the line. So you can see that section that's off centered is the section in between the next stripe that will not be painted. And then now on both sides, I'm going to lay another piece of masking tape, leaving some of the fabric exposed. And I'm going to try to match up that same spacing that's going to be left unpainted into the next stripe that I'm going to. I just visually, I like that sizing. And so I'm just going to lay that straight down. And then the same thing, I don't want to cover up where the tacks have been. I'll add a little piece of tape at that very bottom.
little chair top definitely needed a little something. So now I have a piece of parchment paper and a no steam hot iron. And the uniqueness about that multi-use apple barrel paint is once you heat it up, it becomes one with the fabric. So instead of being hard, crusty paint on the top of fabric, once you heat that up, it'll be nice and soft and blended. And my final step is to seal everything in, protect that fabric using a coat of Scotchgard fabric protector. So I love that God Wink moment. Not only did I find those I guess when you look them up, they call them store displays, old-timey store displays, or they could have been plant stands. I'm not really sure. The ones that I bought previously at an auction were store displays. And then if you can't find the store displays, let me share with you how you can make, make a plant stand and a basket come together and be all as one. People just love things with legs. They love raising things up, a place to put your pretty blankets, a place to put your pretty pillows that if you don't want to always have them all laying on your couch. So they are a quick selling item. And fabric stools that are in good shape. Okay, they were they were questionable bull shape, but it's a secondhand store that you get. You get what you pay for. <laughs> and you know that you have to put some work in it. And yes, those Ikea type pieces that just come screwed together, if they would just send a bottle of glue, then these pieces would stay together. But I guess I wouldn't have anything to make over if nobody donated them to the thrift store. And after I painted it black, it was just... It just that fabric was just it needed more so I hope that you enjoyed the grain sack stripes it's a classic look it's a look that sells uh, I, I kid you not just some simple stools whether somebody buys just one or they buy them as a set I sell them separately and I probably would ask um, if you're wondering like the baskets actually we can get for those smaller sizes, 65, 85 for the larger. The homemade piece that I made, I can get about 50 for that. And then I can get about 65 for each one of the benches in our areas. If everybody's always curious on the prices, that's what I would put on. I'm still a rural town and I love making items over for you all. So again, give me a quick comment down below. Have I inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way? Have you found any of these? Have you flipped any of these yourself? Or have I have have you looking for any of these items now when you're out and about? So again, thank you for watching today's video and we will see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye. Bye.